All right. Um. Uh, yeah. So, as usual, message in the chat. Let me know you're here. Let's see who's inside. I think um, I'm to get accustomed to some need. Like Rihanna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jump in the chat. Jump in the chat. Send a message. All right, um, let's take the follow up. So. Um. Sleep in my Wait, I'm making a mistake today. All right, five minutes on and I'll end the live. A little bit too late. Comment if you're there. Ooh, yeah, saw that like there. Mm -hmm. 
Comment, comment. Thanks, please. All right, we're ready to start. Data flow diagram. <clears throat> I need somebody to like send a thumbs up in chat or something to them and that. Okay, let's go. All right, so um, data will be uh, facts and statistics collected. Blah, blah blah. So we want to really try to figure out how do we take data and pass it through a system. That's what data flow diagram tries to do. Hold on, eh? Hungry. All right. So the point of a data flow diagram is to show how data is captured, processed, and distributed. You need to be able to track when it comes in, what happens, and how it goes out, which is kind of like what you would have learned in IPO diagrams. Input process output. A data flow diagram is just a glorified IPO or a much bigger IPO. Um, let me show you here and my yeah, good sound. The sound is up. Yeah. <laughs> So, symbols in a data flow diagram, you have process, you have direction, processes are kind of, um, kind of ovalish, yeah, kind of ovalish, kind of thing like that. Processes could also sometimes look like this, or they um, look like arrows, well, data flows will be arrows. Then you have data stores. A data store is um, like a book 
or database or anywhere I use write down information or storage, right? Then you have an external entity which is represented by a rectangle. So we go through the shapes again. Process is around the rectangle, sometimes it's represented by a kind of oval. The arrow is to show the data that's passing. Data store. The data store will show the um where the data is stored. External entity will be a rectangle, which could be a person. So, mm, ten minutes ago. Alright. Alright. The external entity is usually um the source or destination they are usually nouns if you're not familiar what a noun is a noun is like people places or things but in data flow diagrams it'll most likely be people easily data flow lines they are usually pieces of data or physical items so things like name age type price rate reports all those things are pieces of data those will flow on arrows from an external entity which is a person then there is a process so the process acts on data the goal of the process is changing it from one form to another or transferring it to another place for so example like a barcode reader will get a, a, a set of numbers and that will translate to a price in the point of sale system, right? So that's a process. A process will make changes. Data stores the whole data that has been already processed and usually will be received. So it's kind of like usually has it with database or book or some kind of thing like that. Good so far. <laughs> Right, so there are two major levels of a data flow diagram. First one is called context level. Context level will be the basic level, which will like show it only has one process. The rules of a context level means it should only have one process. Level one breaks it down into sub processes. Now, context level could also be analogized to level zero sometimes you will see that depending on the past paper you're doing or depending on the question i do right so context level is what we're going to be doing tonight basic context so let's say we have a shoe store the customer which is an external entity We'll send the shoe name into a shoe order system. The shoe order system now is going to take that shoe name and translate it into a shoe ID. So that will go to the stock room. And then when the shoe is ordered and paid for, it will create a sales report that will go to the sales manager, which is an external entity. External entities, their goal is to make sure that they receive data or send data. The process is to do stuff to the data. So you realize the shoe name, and it came back out of this process, change the shoe ID, and it came, came to sales report. So this is basic linkages. So now let's ask, ask ourselves some questions. Where was the data input? Data was input from the customer into the shoe system. Where's the data being processed? It's happening here. Where's the data being distributed? Being distributed to the stock room and the sales manager. So you kind of see the concept of input, process, output, right? That's where it, that's where it actually originates from. 
as the as the um IPO diagram is like the data flow diagram grandfather or daddy. Now, if you take this two system now, we try to zoom in on it into this two order system. We could see what happens on the inside and we break it down. So, we break it down the processes into three different processes. First one is receive order from the customer. From the customer, we're going to get the name. And then once we receive that order from the customer, we're going to now take the order information and do one fill out the sales file to update the stock. All that happens from this one process here. It gets the name of the shoe and then figures out, okay, I need to update the sales file because I bought it. And then send the shoe number to the stock room. It should be shoe number 1294. Right? When it goes to this process here, this process now is going to be the one that fill out the daily sales file because this person here is probably a person named Pam. Pam's job is to just be the customer service representative and get the information. When they get the information, they go by the um, cash and, and say, all right, I make a sale. Then Bob now will be the one to update the sales file by clicking or whatever the case. And then Pam now will go to somebody named John and John will update the stock and then he'll update the stock database. These would be like people and they would all be getting information. But of course in our computerized system, these things won't be done by people, they'll be done by functions. So the customer sends the information into Pam, Pam gets the information, sends it to Bob, sends it to John, John updates the stock database, Bob updates the daily sales file. After now, a man named Bill will get the information from the sales file and get the information from the stock database and create a sales report. And then Bill now will take a sales report and send it to the sales manager. And everybody will be happy after that. So this is the whole level one breakdown now of the DFD. The same show order system that we had here This is context, right? Sorry, this is, yeah, this is context. We're going to now take this one, this big process in the middle here and break it down into all the different possible parts like this. So we have a customer who comes, puts in a shoe. The person who has to process the order is Pam. Pam processes the order, sends the shoe ID, which will be 1196 or whatever it is, to the stock room. The stock room will say, all right, cool, we have that. And then Pam will now say, okay, cool, Bob. I think I changed any names here, but that's okay. Hey, Bob, um, make a sale. Pull out the daily sales file for me, please, with the price of the shoe. And they, then Pam will send a message to John. John, hey, I make a sale. Update the stock for me, please. John will update the stock file. Uh, Bob will update the daily sales file. And once the two of them are updated, then... I can't remember his name, Jack. Jack now will pull the information from the daily sales file and then pull the information from the um, daily stock file, generate the sales report, and then it will go out. So you realize that this external entity started by asking for a shoe, but then we had a process, a next process, a next process, a data store, a next data store, and a, let's call this word, a next process that goes to this external entity. And that's basically all that data flow diagrams is about. How you link these four guys. External entity, process, data store, and the arrows that join them. So, let's look at some simple rules before I go to one question and then we'll... Um, I'll close this off and I'll, if I have any questions, you'll ask me, right? Rules. This is a process, right? So you can get things coming into a process and two things going out, meaning you could get, uh, you could get the ID of something and then you could, that ID could translate to a price 
or it could translate to a stock number something like that but you can't have a process that has nothing coming in but something going out that's just kind of weird what did you actually process nothing no you can't just have something created from nothing you can have two inputs coming into a process and one coming out but you can't have two inputs going in and nothing coming out the whole point of the process is that something must come out so if this is a process um block it must follow these rules next rule a data store could talk to a process and store it in our next data store so you could have like um prices here and then um quantities here and then inside here you have totals yeah this process will do the multiplication and it could work like that you can't have a data store talking to the next data store because one database talking to another database that's kind of weird that's like having two books next to each other and they're just exchanging information somebody has to be in the middle to carry out the process from one data store to the next data store Next one, an external entity could send information to a process and that could be stored in a data store, which could be like a manager. You could send information about payroll and then you could have salaries in the data store. That's very possible. You can have an external entity talking to a database. That's like somebody walk into your store and then go and go on your computer and update your stock file. That is kind of bad. You ain't going to do that. Next rule, external entity could go through a process and an external ent entity get it. So like a customer could come in, could do something and buy stuff and then the um, supplier will get a notification that the person ordered something or something like that. But two external entities can't talk to each other. That's like if you run out of stock, the customer talk to your supplier so that they could get the information. As that's not possible well it's possible but it's weird and of course a data store could information could be pulled from a data store to work on and the process could work on it and then send it out to external entity you kind of get it drift by now but a data store can't, can't talk to um, external entity the real goal is for you to understand that basically you must have a process in the middle of everything you can't just have external entities talking to external entities and processes like that. So, if you understand the rules, um, send my little thumbs up and we'll start the um, question. Well, I'll do one question. If I can find the question. All right, cool. So it's saying that this data flow diagram has six errors. So you've received the following data flow diagram from a software developer, identify the six errors. So this is standard IT question in here. They will be like, okay, what is missing from this data flow diagram? Obviously we see in things like, um, we see in things like new video, we see in member details, see in payments, we see in um, receipts. There's some sort of like video club or some sort of some sort of receiving information, right? So we see in video club. So we know that for sure. So we had to ask ourselves some very simple questions. We start here, we have an external entity. This external entity mm. is sending a piece of data called video number. The video number going to a process, but there's no, no name for the process. So we should give this process the name of what? Get. I remember, a process is always a verb. So we're going to say get 
um video number if i say get video number that means i get any video number from the external entity which is the video after i get the video number i now have to um get the details or well, where the details coming from up here mm -hmm. so i have to put in video database for data store for any way database is always your first go to so we get the video number so instead of putting get video number i want to put get video info the video info consists of the video number and this the stuff that i get from the video database right so get video info after getting video information i'm going to send the details to some process called compute bill this bill is going to get computed by getting the name of the member or the details or something like that and now i need to get the member number who is that coming from an external entity called member so the member sends their number i get the member details the member details go to this um process here the process calculates the bill all right cool where do i get member details from because i got the member number we now need to get the member record that's going to come from the member file but the member file doesn't have a name so i'm going to put data store d2 and then i now have to calculate the um well some is okay right so we have a name for this process here we have a name for this process here but we don't have a number for this one so if this was number one this was number three this is number two then of course this is not process number four so that's the fourth process and now my other problem is that this arrow here doesn't have any information and this doesn't have any name every arrow must have a label so from the member file i need to get something to print the receipt so most likely i'm going to get the member name because the name had to go on the receipt the payment details i got from the get payment um process and then i'm printing the receipt and sending it to the member so obviously i'm sending receipt so that there is going to now give me my six errors what are the six errors one name two out of put the receipt three out of put the number four there four out of put the word member inside there five out of put the name of this process and six i have to name the database and that's simple data flow diagram in there for you any questions All right, so while you're there, let me let you know about the classes. I have for um, keep computer science. Computer science is on a upper sixes on a Tuesday. Oh, everything for these classes are online only, right? Upper six as Tuesday night. Lower six comes I is on Thursday. And then um IT is uh boy. IT is on a Wednesday. No. Oh. Upper six is Wednesday night and lower six is Thursday afternoon. All right, so if you understand, if you if you like understand data flow diagrams a little better now, um, these classes I have here they're currently on past papers. So we'll be for the rest of the term until um, exam. We'll be doing past papers in all these classes. Um, you could call or WhatsApp the number. 
you could message on IG or you could just come to the YouTube live every Sunday night. Sunday night for Cape is um is nine um, ten um. and uh, what uh, what we do on a Sunday night is basically what you tell me on a Friday afternoon. On a Friday afternoon on IG, I do a post and I'll ask you what you want to look at or what we want to do, and then we will. Go. So if you're good with that, say yes. Thank you very much. I'm going to this of chicken now because you any tat All right, it was real. Bye bye. See you next week Sunday. Remember, follow on Instagram, and well, make sure you put notifications on on the channel so you get when the live starts.